This is PMP News, and I'm here with C.J. Grisham from Open Carry, Texas. He's on his way to El Paso for a, a Second Amendment Open Carry uh, rally, and I'm going to just let him explain why he's going, whatever he want, information he wants to get out, and, and we'll go from there. Hello, C.J., how you doing? Hey, what's going on, brother? Yeah, good to see you again. Yeah, I'm, uh, with, yeah, I'm on my way to El Paso. I'm about... I don't know, three hours into my trip here, which means I've got like 40 more hours to go. <laughs> it's a long uh, drive, I know. Been there, done uh, it. Yeah, that's what it feels like. But um, so I've been, since since I started Open Carry Texas six years ago, I've, I've been to every single major city in Texas and I've done Open Carry walks and, and many, many, many uh, smaller cities throughout Texas as well. But where I haven't been is all the way out to El Paso. And, uh, so what I'm doing this weekend is since it has been, I mean, gosh, I've, uh, we founded open carry Texas six years ago and this is my first time getting out to El Paso. So I'm actually, it doesn't spending, seem like that long ago. I, mean, I was at the first one, man. Yeah. It, it, so it, it's, uh, I'm going to spend four days out here. Well, three days, essentially Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and, uh, go to different places out here in West Texas. Uh, I'm out here to show support for our, our guys. We've got a few thousand members out here in El Paso. Uh, tomorrow, we've got an event down in Socorro, Texas. It starts at 11, or Socorro, if you want to say it like uh, like the Spaniards do down there. And the reason for that is we're, we're going to meet outside of Will Hurd's office. He is a... Uh, well, he's kind of weak on gun rights and illegal immigration. And uh, I mean, some people like that, some people don't. But uh, so we're going to go down there and kind of do an open carry rally there and let them know that um, stop messing with gun owners, that there's nothing to be afraid of. This is what good guys with guns look like. Um, on Saturday, we've got a Keep Texas Red event at Fort Stockton that I'm going to as well. And then I'm just going to find some time to do some open carry bike rides and some walks with some people uh, unannounced around in the area. And uh, I know I talked to you offline about uh, sending me one place I, I need to go. And so I'm just going to kind of show up and do what I normally do out in central Texas, but do it out here in West Texas instead and uh, get some video for future release. I don't expect you to have too much problem because y'all are so well known in what y'all do, but you never can tell in El Paso has some really stupid cops. And I, 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 I know a lot of people don't like it when I say that, but there is some stupid ass cops in El Paso and other places, but I have a special interest in El Paso because of what happened over there. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it's just like every other thing of society The there's, there's stupid people in every profession. The problem is, is that in most professions, when you have a stupid person, you don't lose your life over it. And no. unfortunately, in law enforcement, if you've got a stupid person, well, you lose your life, your freedom, your money, your time, uh, your job, you can lose everything. Yeah. And all it takes is one stupid person. Whereas, uh, you know, a, a stupid farmer, he, he might hurt himself and that's about it. And people defend these idiots. But anyway. Yeah. So it's just the, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, we, I mean, I don't, I try not to paint with a broad brush, yeah. but I definitely want to expose the bad guys and the stupid guys that are out there. And, and it's unfortunate that they do exist, but until, until all the good guys actually start doing something about it, then we're going to keep having these problems. And if, if, you know, law enforcement is, is frustrated with the fact that people are walking around carrying rifles or cameras or whatever it is that, that they find so threatening, well, then they should just stop responding to it. Stop harassing people and we'll just go away because there's no reason for us to exist anymore. But as long as our rights are being violated and uh, law enforcement just can't seem to get through their thick skulls, uh, some, then we're going to continue to be out there until those thick skulls are gone. But there's, there is the problem is there's so many of them. There's always going to be some, but this is just it's it's a wide just widespread. It's so easy to find a cop that doesn't care about the law, doesn't know about the law, doesn't care about the, the rights, cares more about his ego and his in his paycheck than anything. It's yeah, the ego. But and that's the biggest thing. A lot of it is ego because I have yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Once. 
I, I can only find one incident where it actually, okay, I take it back because there was one recently with um, External Affairs Houston just did a video where a police officer actually admitted he was wrong. But even when you present them with a piece of paper that's got the facts on it, even when it's the actual law that they are supposed to know and be enforcing, they will refuse because of their egos. Because it, it, it's funny. These are people that we, we hear words attached to like hero um, and, and these other types of terms, but they, they are probably some of the most thin-skinned, light-egoed people on the planet because they can't admit when they're wrong. And that's what takes strength. That's a real hero will say, you know what? I really screwed this up and I'm sorry. And you know what? You're right. And that that's to me, that's a hero. That's what a hero is to me. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not some badass guy that can puff his chest out and see who can last the longest, uh, you know, sticking their, their sack in a tank of ice. <laughs> it, it, it's who can actually admit that they were wrong sometimes. Well, back to El Paso. Is there a special? Oh, yeah. uh, does something special happen to make you want to make this trip, or is it just it's about time I get out there and do something out there? It was kind of a, a confluence of different things. Uh, there, so what it started with is there's a Keep Texas Red event in Fort Stockton, and I and I know the organizer of that, and we were trying to get an event like that in Temple, where I live. So I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm just going to make my trip out there and uh, I'll use this as my, I, cause I can do double duty. I can do that. And I can head to El Paso and, and show some support to our group out there in El Paso. So there's no event other than the fact that it's near Will Hurd's district. Um, and that's the third thing. So one was the keep Texas red event. Um, the two is Will Hurd and, his support for red flag laws and the bump stock ban. And then three, being able to get out there and uh, meet with some of the El Paso guys. Cause they were talking about doing an event anyway. They just wanted to do something and they were asking me about, Hey, what can we do? And I was like, well, heck I'll tell you what, I'm going to be out there on the fourth. Why don't we do something that weekend? And um, you know, we can push it or whatever. So thankfully they, we don't have to worry about going down there to, you know, stand up to some police officer who, violated someone's rights although we we do have some videos from a year or two ago where there were some incidents in El Paso but they weren't major and so there's no reason there's no real reason to protest in El Paso we're just going there to to exercise our rights well I hope you get a, a bunch of support out there and, and plenty of people out there with you it's always nice to see the numbers because it oh, yeah. makes a statement and, uh, yeah, and, and, and as many people as we can get out there, if you're anywhere nearby, I mean, hell, I'm driving eight and a half hours. I think if somebody's within an hour, they can go out there. And, and uh, now tomorrow's event on Friday, tomorrow's event is at 11. And again, it's outside Will Hurd's office there. So uh, if you can make it out there, I know it's a Friday. I know it's during the business day, but we kind of wanted to make sure that his staff was there and could see us because we know they're not going to be there on a Saturday. And what I would say is pay attention to uh, my channel, uh, my CJ Grisham channel, because uh, if you're in El Paso, I'm probably going to be do some, doing some impromptu stuff, but you might have an hour's notice or something like that. And, and I'll let everybody know where I'm going to be and when I'm going to be there. Uh, just not, I don't want to give too much notice because uh, I want it to be as organic as possible. Yeah, maybe if we get time, you can uh, jump on here and we can go live and you'll just give us a live update. You know, if there's something interesting going on you want to do or, or just want to do that, but you know, we can play that by ear. So is there okay. any more information you want to get out? Cause that's the main reason I'm doing this video is to help get the information out and see if we can get you some extra support out there. No, that's, that's it. That's literally uh, that. That's just what I wanted to do. I appreciate you um, helping me spread the word because you know, even if it's just one person that is in your sphere that uh, is interested in this, then that's one extra person we can get out there. And maybe that person will bring a friend or a neighbor or, or something. And that's, that's what we want. We just want more people to come out and exercise their rights and show what a good guy with a gun looks like so that um, we can re, you know, regain the narrative yeah. from the uh, gun grabbers. Well, 
it is a Friday and it's a work day, but a lot of people get off early on Fridays. And yeah. how long do you think you're going to go tomorrow? Because maybe it'll be after lunch people get off. And if, well, we'll be there. We'll be there for uh, even though it's starting at eleven. We're we're going to be doing walks, and um, I I plan to be at some point all day long, uh, doing something, whether it's a walk or a bike ride, or and, and you know if somebody else wants to come and do something, uh, and they just want to reach out to me, you know, come to my channel, leave a message or something, uh, send me an email, CJ at cjgrisham dot com, and I you know I'll I'll I'm I'm here. I'll walk uh, 12 hours a day if I have to, just just to meet somebody's schedule. You know, I don't mind going one on one with somebody and and doing a walk. All right. Well, all right, so those of y'all that are, are are big supporters or just small supporters of the Second Amendment, and you're in the area, you know, maybe an hour if you get off early enough, get out there with CJ and the rest of them and uh, show a little support for the Second Amendment and. Then, let Will Hurd know how you feel. And I guess that's it for today, CJ. I appreciate you being here. I'm going to let appreciate you get it, back on the road because I know you got a long drive. Yeah, I got a long drive. So I'm going to – and it finally stopped raining. I've been driving in rain the entire time. But All right, Steve, take care, brother. All right. Be, be good out there and be careful. All right. Later.